Yo, what is good, yo? It's your boy Top back here with part two of Nate and I ranking the most underrated players on each NBA team. If you guys haven't checked out part one, that will be down below in the description. If you are new to the channel and have not yet, please hit that subscribe button um, as we're on the road to 35,000 subscribers. Let's hop right into the video. Hopping into the next team here is the Orlando Magic. And listen, uh, listen, I'm sad to see Jonathan Isaac go down because. For me, he's probably who I would have chosen. Uh, be, I, I just I'm not comfortable choosing him, knowing he's going to be out next se the, the whole next season. Uh, but the the makeup of those Magic roster just isn't good. I just I don't like their roster at all. Folds, I hate him. Terrence Ross is just a chuck. Uh, for me, the most underrated player is James Ennis. I, 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 listen, James Ennis. What he gives uh, the Orlando Magic is a very good defender, a decent shooter, uh, and kind of just another 3 and D type player that I think a lot of people overlook. Even without Aaron Gordon, uh, James Ennis plugged, got plugged in there, played upper 30s minutes every single night out, uh, and was just a very instrumental piece. And, and when the Magic, com Magic competed against the Bucks, he was a big piece to that. Nate, take me through your Magic roster. So... I don't think anyone on the Magic is really underrated, except for one man, and that man is their starting center, Nikola Vucevic. This guy, you, you, when you t look at the other centers in the league, you got Rudy Gobert, you got Steven Adams, you got Clint Capella. All those guys, every single one of them gets talked about. Man, doesn't get Steven talked about Adams. He he, who gets talked about more, Steven Adams or Nikola Vucevic? I don't know. Or Adams gets talked about way more. Everyone wants to say Adams is this or that, but. What Vucevic can do as a center, not many centers in the league can do. He can. He's a very, very good post-up player. He's a very, very good passer. He's one of the most skilled. He he is one of them. He's probably a top four skilled big man in this league from a skill perspective. Do you yeah. disagree? No. Just from a, a skill perspective, he's not he's not athletic, and that's where you know you kind of get into his weaknesses. But what he gives you on the offensive end. He's one of the best offensive centers in the NBA right now. Now, defensively, it's a little different different story, but no one talks about Nick Vucevic, and he's so so good. Now, I don't think I think the problem with Vucevic that you're gonna that you're gonna continue to see throughout his career is he's not ever going to be able to be a center on a on a on an elite team, just because you're not running the offense to him. It's tough, and when you run the offense to him, it's hard to be an elite team. So it's kind of that 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 little dilemma right there, but. No one talks about the man. And, and this is the thing. When the Magic did compete versus the Bucks, Vooch was the reason. So for that, I do agree with you. I don't think Vooch gets enough uh, you know, credit for the Orlando Magic. The Dallas Mavericks is another team. I think they got a lot of different guys that you can make a case are very, very, very underrated. You know, you could even listen. You could make a case uh, that a guy like uh, Bobon's underrated, Dorian Finney-Smith, Dwight Powell, even DeLon Wright. All the way up to even guys like KP. For me, there's it came down to two guys that it was truly between. Uh, those two guys being Seth Curry and Dwight Powell. For me, I think Seth Curry is the most underrated player for the Dallas Mavericks. And the, the, here's the reason for it. Seth Curry is one of the best shooters in the entire NBA. And if you don't believe me, look what, look at the stats on the screen right now. And I'm going to pull up his stats from this year as well. This season, for the Dallas Mavericks, he averaged 12.4 points on 45% shooting from three. That alone, the attention Seth Curry gets, separates him from a lot of different guys. You know, Luka Doncic obviously isn't that good of a shooter, but he needs shooters around him. Seth Curry is a very instrumental piece um, to that, especially when, you know, he could be that uh, kind of secondary ball handler to play off the ball. Is he a good defender? No. Uh, but I, I like Seth Curry, and I like what he brings to the Dallas Mavericks. Nate, take me through the Dallas Mavericks. So with the Mavericks, actually, I, I'm not the biggest Seth Curry fan. I think defensively, he's a, he's a huge liability on the defensive end. Obviously, I guess I shouldn't say I'm not a fan. I just don't think he's necessarily underrated. But, you know, to each his own. For me, I like Finney Smith. And the reason I like Finney Smith is not necessarily that he's a great defender. He is a good defender. I don't think he's a great defender. 
his versatility on defense is in my I, I love versatile defenders. For me, the perfect team would be a bunch of guys that were six eight and switch six nine and could switch everything. And Finney Smith would fit right into that mold. And he could he could cone up and be a perfect three and D guy. Yeah. Ledick, and, and, and you know, Finney Smith does his job. Like he I rebounds said, well. Finney Smith was one of those guys as well, especially when Dwight Powell got hurt. Uh Fiddy Smith started playing more and more minutes. So I agree with you on that. Uh, but I, you know, Dwight Powell is a guy that I also think is very underrated. But I like, I like Dwight Powell a lot too. You know, Fiddy Smith was one of those guys uh, on my list. I just, listen, if a guy's shooting 45% from three, it's, that's, he doesn't get talked he's about. He's giving up 45% from three. I'm sorry, but Lord. Uh, this season he's came into his own. I mean, he, this has been by far his best season. Um, and, and I don't know. I just, I, I like Seth Curry a lot. Hopping into the next team, the Brooklyn Nets. Uh, another team that I looked at and I was just like, ew. Like, this team yeah. is disgusting. It's disgusting. Nate, I'll let you go first before I talk about my guy. Honestly, you could have made a lot of, you could have made a case as a bunch of underrated guys in the Nets because they had a bunch of guys in the bubble randomly playing and they were like, they, they pretty sure they had a winning record in the bubble with a bunch of randoms. But I, I, for don't me, th- I don't think they had a man. I don't think so. Anyways, keep going. I think they had a winning record. I'm pretty sure they pa- didn't. They did they pass the Maverick. Didn't they pass the Orlando Magic in the standings with like I, with TLC leading them? Anyways, I don't. For me, I don't know. Just I looked at the roster, and I really I didn't really want to choose any of those guys because it was such a small sample size, though. So I just chose a guy that I've had for a while, and I just chose Joe Harris because I think Joe Harris is going to be very, very important in future years that comes come for them. I think you, when you have Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving, when all these championship team guys have had a, a very, very good shooter, and Joe Harris is just that. He's going to be a perfect cone for him defensively. You know, Joe Harris isn't the best, but so, so hold on, he's whoa, 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 whoa. so so before good offensively. Go, before you go any further, when I talk about Seth Curry, now defense is a big deal. Now we're talking about Joe Harris. It is what it is. Just yeah, like, but the no, no, no. Joe, Joe Harris is a better defender than Seth Curry. He's not as much of a liability. Look, he's a so liability that's why player. I would say he's not. He's not near as bad as Curry. Not near as bad as Curry. In my opinion, if if I had a team for future years to come as a spot up shooter, just offensively, I think I think Joe. I'd rather have Joe Harris. But Seth Curry Seth gives Curry. you more on the here. offensive end as well. But keep going. No, I'm done. I'm done. That's all I had to say. All right, for me, listen, the Nets just got a lot of guys, uh, and I am gonna choose somebody from the bubble, somebody that I think has just came into their own and has showcased their potential. At a very high level. Now Please I think, don't say who I'm going to say you say. I think that's TLC. You're going to say a guy. Okay, no, no, go. Actually, that's fine. Go ahead. Go ahead. TLC you know, is fine. T- who did you think I was going to say? I thought you were going to say Karis LeVert. And I think Karis LeVert, everyone wants to say he's underrated, that he's becoming overrated. No, no, no. TLC, I'm not going to sit here and say he was super efficient, this and that. But some of the numbers he put up in, 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 in competitive type games were, you know, listen. He showed the ability to take over uh, some games, you know, be kind of that primary player for the Brooklyn Nets, the highest usage rate type guy. Uh, and, and not to say he was efficient in all of his outings, but he had some outings in which he was very, very good. And before the bubble, obviously nobody talked about him. After the bubble, people are starting to talk about him. And, you know, I think even for the Nets moving into the next year, TLC can be a a, a contributor, you know, a guy that's going to contribute. Obviously, if they, they're going to, the Nets are going to have a lot of guys. With Katie, Dinwiddie, Kyrie, you know, they're going to have a lot of different guys, even a Levert. So I think TLC is very, very overlooked on the Nets roster. The Denver Nuggets, man, man, do is it just me or do the Denver Nuggets right now miss a guy like Malik Beasley with with you know Barton being out and Harris being out? Um, not to say it's yep. not to say it, it, it wasn't meant to be because the Wolves were taken, but it's just kind of that. It, it just it, I feel bad for the Nuggets because they trade them because they had so much depth. And now you're, you're looking and might be like, wow, we miss him. But uh, for the Denver Nuggets, for me, it's a no-brainer. Jeremy Grant is the most underrated player. And I don't even think it's close for the Denver Nuggets. Listen, what Jeremy Grant is going to do, I think he's shooting 40% from three this season. Shot 40, 39% last season. Going to be a pretty good defender. A versatile defender like Nate said. You know, I don't even know what he averaged this year. Uh, but just the from the pure eye test of Jeremy Grant, 
Any team in the NBA would love to have a guy like Jeremy Grant. Only 25 years old, only going to get better. Uh, Nate, what are you thinking from this Denver team? No, I like Jeremy Grant a lot. He's kind of another guy you can kind of group in. You know, everyone wants to say, oh, Danny Green. Jeremy Grant's better than, than Danny Green in his role. But for me, Denver's got a lot of dis different guys you could choose from. You could even choose Jamal Murray. I still think he's a little bit underrated. I think he's really going to break out next year. But for me... I'm actually going to change who I have from, from on this list. I had mm -hmm. Monte Morris, and I'm going to change it. I'm going to change and say it's Gary Harris. The reason I say it's Gary Harris is this last game has changed my mind. Gary Harris, you could just tell how much they missed him on the defensive end. In the playoffs, and now that they got him back, he, he, make, he makes a world of difference because – and he, I get it. He didn't shoot great this season, but Gary Harris is known as a good shooter. He came into the NBA draft as a shooter. He had one bad season, but he is a perfect running mate for Jamal Murray. He's a perfect fit on this team. He doesn't need the ball in his hands. And then I guess I'll go to the other guy, Monte Morris, a guy who just doesn't turn the ball over. Very, very good decision maker. He's a, he's really, he's actually a really good shooter. He's really improved in that area, and he's just. I get it. He's not great defensively, but offensively, he, there's, there's a lot of mouths to feed in Denver. And Morris, you can have him on the court. He's going to be a positive for you offensively. And he, he's not a mouth you have to even feed. Feed those mouths. You know, going back to Gary Harris, he is going to be an absolutely incredible defender. And that's what Denver really needs with the makeup of their roster right now. They got a lot of offense, not a lot of defense. Uh, but yeah, I just, I, I like the Gary Harris pick a lot. Monte Morris obviously is that steady hand. Um, he's not the same player as Tyus Jones, but they kind of give you a, a similar type feel. Uh, both kind of game manager type players. Moving on to the Indiana Pacers at first round exit, man. I, they got, did they get swept? I think they got swept as well. Yeah. Listen, I just, it's, it's tough to see. Obviously they were without Sabonis, but it's tough to see the Pacers get swept, uh, in, in that type of a setting. Mm, I'll let you lead. Uh, which, which guy for you? Uh, you think is the most underrated? For me, I, I'm going to stick with my guns here. It's a guy I've been ride or dying with since he was in Milwaukee and won the six and won the rookie of the year. And that's Malcolm Brogdon. I get it. He didn't have a great year. But even though he didn't have a great year, he still had a very, very solid season. I mean, this is probably what, what, what a lot of people expected about what they expected when he went to Indiana. And I think it's a down year for him. I think I think he'll be better next year. He didn't shoot the ball great from the field, but he's still a very, very good game manager. He's a very, very good shooter. And he's he's a, he's a really good decision maker, doesn't turn the ball over. He's a good defender. I really, really like Malcolm Brogdon. I think I think a healthy Old Depot would have been a perfect fit next to him because I think Brogdon is is very good, would be very good next to a, an, an, another all-star guard. I think Brogdon would be the perfect guy. Perfect compliment to that. Now, Oladipo, who knows if he's going to return to form. I really, really hope he does. He's one of the most exciting players in the league, especially when he gets downhill. And I think Brogdon would have been a perfect kind of perimeter threat to, to mesh with that. And both of them would have been good perimeter defenders. So I really like Malcolm Brogdon. I just, in the playoffs, watching Malcolm Brogdon, it's just like, I don't know. There's something about him. And he didn't have a bad playoffs. I'm not saying to say he did, but if you're if you're the point guard, and, and it, I just... He's not the type of to uh, type of player to necessarily take over games either. It's it's just and, tough, and that's what I'm saying. Like it's just tough. His role in Indiana is fine, but I think if you put him next to an All Star guard, he becomes very elite. It's just, it changes things. Not he's not bad at all. For me, I'm gonna select another role player type guy in Aaron Holiday. I think late in the season started coming in his own. Uh, you know, obviously. Um, drafted, you know, and I think this is a sophomore season, uh, kind of a, a late first round pick. And I think he's emerging. And I think moving into next year, um, especially as the backup point guard, backup guard kind of role, he took over t all of TJ McConnell's playoff minutes. TJ McConnell, I don't even know if he touched the floor in a playoff game because of how good Aaron Holiday has been uh, late in the year. And um, obviously, you know, I, I like both Aaron Holiday and Justin Holiday. But for me, I think Aaron Holiday... Uh, could eventually be a, a decent starting uh, starting guard in the league. I truly do believe that. Um, do I think he's going to be, you know, an all-star type player? Probably not, but I think he could eventually be a starting point guard in the league. And that's why I think he is the most underrated player for the Indiana Pacers. Hopping into the next... Let's, let's, 
Oh, let's talk. Well, I just want to say something. Let's talk. I, I want to just say something quick. What if? Imagine a team. They got all three holidays, and they were their they were their guards. Would you be Would you be happy with that or unhappy? Hold up. Oh, you got Drew in there. Mm. Probably unhappy, and, and and here's why I say that. well. Here's why I say that. I think they compliment each other, though. They're they, not like they I don't do, know. But it's Justin's, like, I don't know if Justin's a hall or a, a starting type of player, but I mean, you, Drew definitely is, be. and I think Aaron will eventually be. Definitely could be. He's a, he's a good three and D player, but it's just I don't know. It's, it's not. It's not like a. If you only got one type of guard right now, that is you know above average probably for an NBA team. It's tough. I you know I just yeah, I'd, I'd be right. interested. You're right. Though. How about it to the next team, the New Orleans Pelicans? Sp- <laughs> Speaking of the man with the plan, I'll just hop right into it. Drew Holiday is the most underrated player for the New Orleans Pelicans. I don't have to sit here and explain myself. Drew Holiday is a top 25 player in the NBA. Uh, consistently has gotten and been doing his thing over and over and over again. Uh, he's 29 years old, and this might have been his, you know, arguably his best season yet. This season, Drew Holiday averaged 19, 7, and 5, shot 35% from three, uh, and just was very, very good for the Pelicans team. The Pelicans just aren't good on defense as a whole. And, you know, Drew Holiday is a good individual defender, but just they just haven't surrounded him with good defense just around him. I just, I feel like there hasn't been a good situation for Drew Holiday yet, and I hope eventually he can find that. Nate, who do you think for the for the New Orleans Pelicans is the most underrated? I agree with your pick. I think it's Drew Holiday as well. Now, I will say this. I think if the Pelicans were smart, they would trade Drew, oh, Drew Holiday this offseason. This, yeah, this offseason. He's got one year left on his deal. Pelicans aren't going anywhere next year. I think you trade him. You try to get either a dra- pick a mission draft or a young player to fit the timeline of their team. But And I think there's going to be a lot of teams out there that, that, that'll that want Drew Holiday. Now, I could be wrong. Uh, I think if you do trade him, you're going to want a team that's going to want him to commit to a long-term deal because you just don't want him to be there one year and leave. The other problem with him is... How much money is he going to want? Because he might demand the max a max contract he's gonna want after this season. And he's getting up there in age. His, his game is kind of ageless. I, I love his game, though, too. And I just think he hasn't been on a winning team. So it's just he gets overlooked. He gets overlooked. He hasn't been on a winning team. It's it's a little bit different than Chris Middleton because Middleton's on a winning team. But kind of a similar reason. People just don't. He's just not. He's not flashy. 100%. 100% agree. Hopping into maybe the grossest team yet, the Detroit Pistons. I'll let you take over. I know who my pick is, and my pick's the least flashy pick, the least flashy player on this team. Now, the one guy I would say I like is Christian Wood. I guess you could say he's underrated. I don't I don't know. Who are you going with, Nate? Oh, I don't really think anyone on the Pistons is necessarily underrated. They're another team I had problems with. But I actually kind of changed my mind on this because I don't – I, cause I know Christian Woods has got a lot of hype. I'm like, okay, he's got a lot of hype. How does that make him underrated? But then I delve deeper. I looked at his per 36 minute numbers. Have you ever looked at Christian Woods per 36 number minute numbers? I have not. They are so. I mean, you because because you know he's been good. Mm-hmm. When you dig dive deeper, you realize he's great. Do you realize that even last year, Christian Wood per 36 minutes was averaging 25 points a game. Like the year before this year, when he was getting like, so he was getting like 15 minutes, he was still averaging 25 points per 36, mm-hmm. which I thought was super, super crazy. But this season, he gives you 22 points and 10.6 rebounds per 36 minutes. That's crazy. And he's giving you over a block and he's giving you a steal a game. He's a good stretch big. And, and- I, I mean, listen, those numbers are so good for a stretch four. He's a really good shooter, he's athletic. And when when the, go ahead. when the Pistons, when it got to that point in their season, Christian Wood was playing a lot of minutes. So it's not like he was only playing, you know, Bobon type minutes to put up. He was playing big minutes when he did get help, when, you know, the Pistons did kind of throw in the towel for the season. So I just wanted to throw that out there to, to say, like, the pro th- the, the per 36 in the, in the latter part of the season, those are probably, you know, um, I don't want to say boosted because a lot of times you look at per 36, even for Middleton, you know, they're obviously boosted because he doesn't play a lot. But Christian Wood has seen those type of minutes too. So it's not like he's the type of guy like a Gallinari that's only going to play 29 minutes a game. I, I think with Christian Wood, I mean, obviously he's minute. I think he's going to get more around the 36 minute minutes next year. And 
hey, who knows? D- d- he is an unrestricted free agent this offseason, which is, I mean, I wonder how much money he'll demand. It's going to be interesting to see him. It, it, it will be interesting. See, let's see how much. Let's see how much people give Christian with this offseason. He only got signed for just over a mil this season. I'll say it's going to be risky for whatever team does. Uh, that's what I'll say. Because um, it is. A hey, I wouldn't mind him next to Cat. That's all I got to say. Even though we don't have cap space. Tell me, Sign your trade today. I wouldn't mind it at all. Tell me your one thought on Tony Snell. What What's the thought that comes to your mind? And after you tell me your the thought, the only thing I can think about. One thing I can think about is with Tony Snell is you know that picture on Twitter. He played like 36 minutes and had z- yes, zero stats I, I everywhere. Remember. But look up his stats and then so tell me what Tony you Snell. think about Tony Snell. Look up his stats. Oh, Tony, me, tell me his stats. All you're gonna say is he's a good. All, the only thing you ever say about players is they're good three and D guys. Is he all not you a ever great you, three and D player, Nate? Is he not? He shot I think he's a 39. I think he's a good shooter. Three. I don't know about the. I don't know about he's the a fine deep defender. Part. What do you mean? He's, he's a fine defender. He's fine. You know, go on, we, just go. Just talk about whatever you want to talk about with Tony Snell, and let's move on because for the Detroit this is Pistons, ridiculous. for the Detroit Pistons, He's, he is the most con, one of the most consistent shooters, as well as being probably the best guard defender on the entire roster. Tony Snell is. Listen, give me Tony Snell for the Timberwolves. I will take him every day of the week to play. You know, twenty five minutes for the Timberwolves. Every, any day of the week. If you send him to the Timberwolves, give him, Ew. Give him 25 minutes? those 25 oh my minutes. Gosh. Anyways, hop it on to Also, the- Bruce Brown's their best defender. And go on. Hop it on to the Toronto Raptors. A very good overall team. Oh, no. I think there's I think there's, you know, a lot of guys that you can make a case as the most underrated. For me, uh, I went with OG and Anobi. You know, same thing, same reason as most everybody. Uh, a versatile player can get it done on both ends as well as just being an athlete as well as being a good shooter he's also very very athletic on the offensive end uh for the toronto raptors i think his versatility um and what he can bring to the table is very very important nate go ahead i mean it sounds to me like you just you should just own an nba team and sign a bunch of three and d guys those are the only guys you like but for me i I do like og so i agree with that one i like og a lot because He's so much better than Danny Green as a three and D guy. Let me just say that. And people think people talk about Danny Green like he's who knows what. Who is better? On, who is like better an all star? Listen, who is better on the Toronto Raptors championship run last season? Probably Danny Green. Danny Green played really good last year. That's what I'm saying. Just because he hasn't been as good this year doesn't mean he's he's not underrated. He's overrated. It's not anything to do with their talent. But anyways, my pick is Fred Van Fleet. And here's why it's Fred Van Fleet. People people give credit for Van Fleet for a lot of reasons. They're saying he's just a emerging star. He's a really good shooter. Van Fleet is one of the best perimeter defenders in the game and it never gets it never it never gets brought up. I never hear anyone talk about Fred Van Fleet as an elite defender. He is an elite defender. He is so so good. Him and Lowry are both just the they're both pit bulls on the both on the defensive end, and Van Fleet. He's a he's to be able to have a combination where you can shoot, where you're a really good shooter, a very good playmaker. You don't turn the ball over, and you're one of the best defensive perimeter defenders in the league. Think about that combination for a second. That is an incredible combination that any team would love to have. So that's why I love Fred Van Fleet. I, you know, I don't disagree. I like Fred Van Fleet a lot. I, I like the Raptors' makeup of the roster, although they did get killed yesterday. Let me say this. Let me say this as well. Let me say this as well. You hate the Boston Celtics, right? Yeah. You say they got all these. They got, uh, you just say, like three top 30 players, top 35 players, and they can't win. Or you were like, they were like, you haven't been that many players. Here's the difference. Let me say this. Let, hold up. Let me say this. The Toronto Raptors have almost an exact same talent-wise roster makeup, if not worse. And you love the Raptors, and they're down 1-0. They are down 1-0, absolutely. But here's the difference. What did Boston do in the playoffs last year? This is a new year. They have one of the youngest teams in the league, and they didn't have Kemba Walker. They didn't have three top 30 guys. Listen. How they do? Listen. Listen to what I'm telling you. Listen to what I'm telling you. And Toronto had Kawhi Leonard. I know they had Kawhi Leonard, but did these guys not all perform in the playoffs last year? Every one of the guys on the Toronto Raptors performed out of their mind 
in the playoffs last year. Last year. You can say Kawhi this, Kawhi that. The Toronto Raptors maybe would, listen, they maybe would have made the NBA Finals last year as well. They might have won it without Kawhi. Not to say they would have, but they might have been in that same position. Maybe I'm talking crazy, but as well as I they would. I think Philly goes, but. Maybe Philly. Maybe Philly. But in every other series, I think they played very, very well. And here's the thing about the Boston Celtics. I hear all the time, Kemba Walker's a top 20 point guard. Jalen Brown's a top 25 player in the NBA. Jason Tatum's top 15. How many times you hear Fred Van Fleet in the talks for being a top 25 player, Nate? How many times? I've never heard it in my entire life ever heard that. The Boston Celtics have all these guys that are so hyped up compared to the Toronto Raptors. And that's it. And then you go along with it, they have Gordon Hayward as well. Who, you know, compared to the compared to the Raptors, do the Raptors have a, a fourth player even comparable to Gordon Hayward? I don't think so. At least, yes, at least I at think least, so. I mean... From the I national think, perception. Think, listen, just listen, just listen, just listen. I think the national perception will tell you the, the, the big three from Boston have a worse supporting cast than the big three from Toronto. Yes or no? I got to think about I got to think about what you said and then I'll answer the question. With Gordon Hayward healthy? Yes. Even with Gordon Hayward healthy. I disagree. I think, I think I Marcus Cole. I disagree. Chibaka, Norman Powell, Terrence Davis. Terrence Davis. Bro, you go you go way down the rush. You can go down to Matt Thomas. Okay, but Boston has you wanna know Gordon, who you want who Mar- Boston has? Marcus Smart and Gordon Hayward. They have Semi Ojale. Semi Ojale is not playing on the Raptors. Tell me this. Tell me this. On the Raptors. Do the Raptors have a better fourth player than either Marcus Smart or Gordon Hayward in the national media? No, they do not. That's not my point. I'm saying a better supporting cast. Okay, well, if the Brad fourth and, is not if the fourth and fifth best the Raptors, players, he's the, not. If the fourth and fifth best players for Boston are better than the Raptors' fourth player, I don't. It, it, it's tough to say. Okay, well, they're six, seven, eight, nine. Are this much better? Especially with Daniel Tice, who might be better, might be better than who the Raptors got. What? Daniel Tice. Why it's better than Marc Gasol? What is Matt? What one is of Marc our Gasol? best? What? Whoa, whoa, whoa! One of our what best, or one of our best defensive centers in the league, who's also a good playmaker, who also is a way better offensively. Marc Gasol is better at both ends of the court. All right, let me look this up real quick. So you're telling me a player, and Marc Gasol. Let me look this up to tell you to tell you how well he's been playing this year in this year's playoffs. Cause he is aging. Most of the years, most team, most times, I don't like saying year to year. This playoffs, he's averaging six points, five rebounds, three assists, two turnovers, shooting twenty one percent from three, an effective field goal percentage of forty five percent. I get it's only five games, Nate, but he has been terrible in these playoffs. He's only he's only playing twenty one minutes. That's not even half the game. How is he supposed to be better than the opposing center? And he's not even playing nearly half the game. So you can say all that. Here's here's what you got to remember about Gasol and the way the Raptors play. They don't like having him and Ibaka on the court at the same time. And Ibaka is really really good as well. Good. If you combine their, if you if you combine those two, obviously, obviously Gasol has not been playing as well. But you're 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 even one to say people will just make everything they'll take one game or one little series and then they'll blow it up for no reason because so, so was and you even you were you were you were talking about it with danny green because so was really really good last year in the nba finals he was and it's like people have just people have forgot about marcus Saul and his up impact on both ends of the court he is so smart and he's a player i would love love to have on his team and you're comparing him to daniel tice but i'm just saying this nate when you look at marcus Saul. He's aging. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. He's aging. He's not near as good as he once was. Even he's not near as good as he was last year. And that's just from me watching the Raptors a little bit this year. I just, I haven't he's been. He's not even that much worse. Listen, People man. just want to say whatever. I they just, they have I a really know. good team. He's just playing a role. I just think the Raptors are a lot more slept on than Boston. I would be surprised. Listen, a lot of people think Boston are going to win the series. I, I still would lean towards the Raptors winning the series. And I think, you know. The Kemba Walker, Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown trio gets a lot more hype than Siakam, uh, Fred Van Fleet, and, um, and Kyle Lowry. But that's just my opinion. 
Hopping in to the next team here, we got the Houston Rockets. I think everybody knows who my most underrated player is on the Rockets. Nate, who are you going with? So for the Rockets, for me, it's probably going to be the same as yours. And this is a guy yesterday who showed out, and that's Robert Covington. Look, he is he even even when he was in Minnesota, I've I've kind of I've kind of got a better grasp of Robert. He's one of the players in the league I've, I probably know the most about, and I, I I've learned a lot more since he's gotten to Houston as well. We knew when we, he was in Minnesota, we knew the minute he started dribbling, things were going to go bad. We knew this. We knew he was just going to just turn the ball over most likely. But what I've learned about Covington in Houston is he's not as good of an on-ball defender as I once thought he was. And here's here's what I'll, he's got his in this. But 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 hear me out. Hear me out. Isn't he is such a good defender? Is I think he's the best off-ball defender in the NBA. He gets so many strips. I think he had I think he had like six steals and two or three blocks against uh, against OKC last game. And I get it. CP3, when he was guarding CP3, wasn't a good matchup. Covington's foot speed's not good. He's just naturally not athletic, so that's why. But he gets so many strips. And we, we saw yesterday how good of a shooter. He's a very streaky shooter. But he's still one of the, like, like, a, like a fairly good shooter as a 3 and D guy. I mean, listen, you can't. And he never, everyone wants to talk about PJ Tucker. I hear PJ Tucker all the time. Covington's a better player than PJ Tucker. Why is P.J. Tucker the only one that gets he talked is, about? Not, out of those I don't even think he's that close. But the thing is with Cove, like you said, Chris Paul wanted that matchup last night. Uh, but the thing for Covington is even in Minnesota, he didn't, a lot of times he didn't guard, you know, guard type players. He didn't, you know, he didn't guard the, the opposing point guards of the world. Uh, but against, you know, a guy, let's say uh, a LeBron James, for example, Covington's going to be a pretty good matchup for that type yeah. of player. Compared Maybe. to, compared to Chris think- Paul. I think I think I think I think his best matchup. I think he's actually got a perfect matchup in OKC and Gallinari. Obviously, Gallinari, Gallinari is tough to guard though because when he's shooting, he is, you're he's not. Tough, I mean, man. he's he's he, you can't contest him. So when he's on, he's on. When he's off, he's off. He's I don't know. I just think the foot speed is kind of his biggest weakness. He's got such great hands. His hands though. are immaculate. There's a reason, you know. Obviously, he gets, gets a ton of pokeaways and stuff like that, but. You know, for me, Robert Covington is the most underrated for the player for the Houston Rockets as well. Hopping into the San Antonio Spurs, another absolutely disgusting, despicable team that I didn't even want to select a player for. And I don't even know if I did. If I did, I'd have to look up my notes because off the top of my head, I, listen, I know who I selected, but I don't even want to go here. Nate, who is your pick for the San Antonio Spurs? For me, for the Spurs, it's a guy who's been not talked about ever since he left Toronto for whatever reason. I mean, I guess there is a reason they haven't really been very good. But DeMar DeRozan's playing just as good as he did in Toronto. And he had one of his best seasons of his career this season. He is a guy who will never, ever, ever be... He'll never be to the point where people will respect him as much as he deserves because of his game. People don't like his game. It's gross. I get it. But he's effective. He's efficient. He's a good rebounder. He's a solid playmaker. He's not a very good defender, but offensively, he's a star. He's the same player he was in Toronto. He just doesn't have the supporting cast around him. What I would say is this. DeMar DeRozan is a player I would hate to have on my team. If I watched a team and had a favorite team, I would hate them to have DeMar DeRozan. It's no knock against He's him. not fun to watch. He's not, he's he's not, not fun to watch. watch. He's not necessarily. He's really good. He's not that effective either. Like, he's not that efficient, I should say, either. He's, he's fairly efficient, I believe. I mean, how can you be efficient when your field goal percentage is 40? Well, at least last year was 40. I don't know what it is this year. This year, it's up, I, I think. I think his effective up. field goal percentage is like 55 or something. If it's that high, I'd be surprised. But it, it could be. It, it, definitely, it definitely could be. But last year, it was, it was right about 50. Uh, and it's just tough because that just adds another player that you don't really have to respect on, from the three-point line on the floor. For me... A player that's kind of coming into their own, and I think it's going to continue to come into their own, is Derek White. I even think if you looked at what he did in the bubble, he was very, very impressive. He is he's probably my most fa- he's probably my favorite player to watch for the Spurs. And I think he's only continue going to continue to get better. And I think, you know, in a couple years, he could he has the potential to be an above average guard in this league. That is why I think Derek White is the most underrated player on the San Antonio Spurs. Hopping into the Phoenix Suns here is 
Phoenix is a mess. They did go 8-0 eight and, eight and in the bubble, but if you just look at the makeup of the roster, I think they should have been a playoff team this season. Uh, and that's just kind of my um, thought process. Obviously, they had some injuries throughout the season. This and that, Aiton was suspended. But I think Phoenix has the potential, at least next year, to, they should be a playoff team, in my opinion. Uh, but I think, Nate, if there's one player for Phoenix that you think I'm going to say is the most underrated, who do you think is going to be? Mikael Bridges. Absolutely, Mikael Bridges. And you want to know why, Nate? Why? Because he is an absolutely incredible 3 and D player. And D guy. He the is. only guys you like in the NBA. He is. He's a great That's all you 3 like in the NBA. Everyone's he's a 3 and D guy. He's a great 3 and D player. And when you watch the Phoenix Suns, there's a reason he plays upper 30 minutes almost every single night. He gives Phoenix what they need. Look, Phoenix isn't very good on the defensive end, but Mikael Bridges helps them out more than I can even state. Nate, for you, who is Phoenix's most underrated player? I have Bridges as well, so you, you'll, you'll, you'll be happy with it. And I agree because I think he's one of those, I think he's a very, very good 3 and D guy who doesn't necessarily get talked about as much as the Danny Greens of the world. And when you look at the rest of the roster, I don't really know how many other players are underrated. Maybe Rubio, but I, even I think he's about rated where he should be. So I, I didn't really see very many underrated players on Phoenix's roster, but I do like Bridges a lot. Perfect. Hopping into the next team, the Oklahoma City Thunder. These Listen, I'll, I'll be the first person to say that Oklahoma City Thunder have been very, very, very fun to watch this postseason. Nate, if you had to guess one player on the Thunder that I think is underrated, who do you think it's going to be? Let's see, you like 3 and D guys. Thunder don't really have a 3 and D guy. They don't have a this 3 and D guy, but you know who they I'll do go, have. I'll go, I'll go Chris Paul. I think Lou Dort. No, oh my gosh, end, not you now. Is tenacious, man. He gets after go. it every time go. he's in the game. Every possession, he is relentless. Every single possession, he's relentless. There's a reason he plays. He's not a good shooter, but there's a reason he plays. And I'll say this. When you're comparing, you know, a guy like Dort to even a Josh Akogi type, I'm taking, look, I don't, I don't know. I don't know if I'd take Dort, but all I'm going to say is. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. One second. Just let me stop you in your tracks right there with that statement. You just said, I don't know if I'll take Dort over Josh Akogi. That statement right there proved to me that you think Dort's overrated because all I ever hear anyone talk about on Twitter is Lou Dort now. He's all I ever hear. How is this guy underrated? That's all anyone I ever hear because, talks about. Because, I get on because, Twitter, listen. I see everything about Lou Dort. How does that make him underrated? With everyone loves him. Listen. He's the talk of every, 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 that's the only play that the Thunder that ever gets talked about anymore for the Thunder. But, 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 but there's a reason for it because when he has, when, or when Harden has a bad game, all the credit goes to Lou Dort. But when Lou Dort was bricking, when he was 0 for 9 from the three-point line the other night, Lou Dort, you know, was getting trolled on Twitter, this and that. Lou Dort battles the good side of Twitter and the bad side of Twitter. But what he's going to do every single night can't be overlooked. For the for the Oklahoma City Thunder, he it's is not very, overlooked. very, very key. He absolutely is. And I can tell you Everyone he is. Everyone knows who he is. Everybody knows who Lou Dort is now because of the playoffs. But before the playoffs... He just came about. Nate, did Lou Dort have any NBA history prior to this season? No, he didn't. Did he was he? a rookie. Listen, How was he supposed to? Listen, listen. Halfway through the season, what has Lou Dort done? Nothing. Nothing. He literally. How does that before make? Before the playoffs. What are talking about right now? That's what I'm saying, though. Right now is part of Lou Dort, his process to becoming a big-time player in the league. He's going Big to develop time player it. now. Oh, He's oh. going to develop oh, a jump shot, man. He is a oh, tenacious Lord. defender. And trust me when I say this. Lou Dort someday is going to get paid someday. Wait three or four years. He will be a starter on an NBA team, maybe an NBA finals team in his future. Nate, go ahead. Let me just say this. I like Lou Dort. He's a good player. He's a good defender. But I don't know where all of a sudden this big hype around Lou Dort comes from. Like, all of a sudden, all I ever see, he is the most overhyped player in the NBA right now. Come on, he man. is. I'm sorry, Come but on, he is. Man. He's the most. He's one of the most overrated players in the NBA right now. 
has even played good this series. Why does everyone think he's like this Harden stopper? Harden's playing fine. Harden's not even played bad. Lou Dort's been good on him, but he hasn't been like this and the Harden stopper. Nobody can stop Harden. Let's be honest with ourselves. Uh, for me, look, we're talking about underrated, right? We're talking about underrated. Yeah. Is there yes or no? Yes or no? Who has been more hyped up this series? Lou Dort or Danilo Gallinari? Who has been more hyped up? It's been Lou Dorton hasn't been close. Put some respect on Gallinari's. I'll say this. Who has been more never seen I have never seen a guy who has been so so good throughout his whole career, been a fringe all-star when he was in Clippers on, on the Clippers, arguably the best player on a playoff team. And he was so good. And a guy who, like I said, you don't need to run any. I mean, it's not he. You can run plays for him. And he's he's very good at that. But you don't need to run plays for him. He doesn't need to dribble. Bro, this guy is so pure from behind the arc and from the mid-range area. He's, man, one of the best scorers in our game, honestly. He just, he just no one talks about Gallinari. He's been hurt, and I'm glad to see him finally healthy. Listen, I like Gallinari too, but what, what I'm saying with Dort, here's what I'm saying. Dort is talked about a lot, but a lot of the talk has been negative throughout this playoffs it has been Lou Dort and can't rightfully shoot. so Lou Dort can't do this Lou Dort can't do that but you know what Lou Dort does every single night he's going to give a hundred 110 percent on both ends of the court he oh, is a lot of other players listen hold up don't the, isn't is Andre Roberson healthy right now I believe so is he playing no there's Robers a reason there's a reason for it because Lou Dort is the new man in town and hey, listen let me say he this. Let me say rating. this. Let me hold up. Hold up. Hold up. That is not why. Because of Roberson. It's because Roberson's trash. And look, hold up before you say, well, Lou Dort. Look at the guys playing over him. Darius Basley. They're playing Terrence Ferguson over him. Terrence Ferguson is statistically like, like the worst player in NBA history. They have no wings. And that's the only reason Lou Dort's playing as much as he is. Look at their wing depth. They got no one. Listen, I like Lou Absolutely Dort. Absolutely no I one. I still think Lou Dort is underrated. And I think Lou, listen, I think Lou Dort in a, in a couple years is going to be a very, very good NBA player. Uh, hopping into the next team, the Minnesota Timberwolves. Now, I think the Timberwolves have a lot of different routes you can go down. Obviously, Big Cat, you know, I think he's underrated uh, and <laughs> big time. But when we talk about guys who aren't talked about at all, I think you can go a couple of different ways. Nate, tell me, take me through the Timberwolves, kind of what you're thinking behind this roster is and where you would go. So for me, the two most underrated players on the team, in my opinion, are the two stars. Look, you can say you can say it's Malik Beasley. I think Malik Beasley is becoming so underrated that he might be overrated now. You can say it's Wancho. I don't really know how good Wancho actually is. James Johnson and maybe Naz Reed. I like Naz Reed. He never really gets talked about. He had a very good rookie season. So I look at the two stars. I don't think D'Angelo is necessarily overrated. So then I, I, that leaves me with one with, and that's a big cat. I think Big Cat's by far the most over, underrated player on the Timberwolves because just because of the simple fact that he's been on one winning team and, you know, it's through no fault of his own. Look at the guys when they leave Minnesota, what happens to them? They, they, they kind of phase out. He has had no help throughout his whole career besides from when he had Levine and they traded Levine so it's just it's it, he had Rubio too they got rid of Rubio they traded him they've been a mess in the draft but Cat is still the best center in the NBA and no one will wants to admit it because they don't watch Minnesota play they think he's just a three-point shooter it's just kind of one of those false narratives he has so many false narratives about him kind of like Kind of like a lot of a lot of young stars, kind of like Chris Middleton's got a lot of false, false narratives about him, and he's just underappreciated. That goes without saying that I agree wholeheartedly with you. But a guy who I think has came into his own when he got to Minnesota is James Johnson. And the thing that surprised me with James Johnson is how good of a ball handler and playmaker James Johnson is. Now I I, I don't know if, if a lot of different situations didn't allow for James Johnson to do that but and I don't know if you agree with me Nate but I personally like James Johnson uh his ability to bring the ball up the court at six foot seven he can play the power forward or even battle the, the center bigs um uh, from other teams and look when he got to Minnesota this year uh when he got to Minnesota he averaged 12 points five rebounds and in um and 3.5 assists in 24 minutes played per 36 minutes 
that hold up can i can i pull up his per 36 quick um per 30 yeah, per 36 minutes that equates to 17 points seven rebounds and six assists that is a very good stat line and he shot the ball decent for minnesota shooting 37 percent from three an effective field goal percentage uh let's see if i can um if I can get back to the effective field goal percentage here. An effective field goal percent of 56 when he got to Minnesota. Listen, this James James Johnson obviously doesn't deserve the contract he has. But he has been a pretty... He's, for me, he's been a surprise since he got to Minnesota. That's just my opinion on it. I think he, he was a, a kind of a spark uh, and kind of just what Minnesota needs. He's a good, he's a good leader. Um, has that kind of... Uh, background. I, wasn't he a fighter once? Listen, that's besides the point. Yeah. But he brings that kind of mentality that Minnesota needs as well. I'm a big, big fan of James Johnson. I I just want to add. I want to add. I want to add a couple things here. The first thing I want to add is when you when you see who who what these guys become when they get to Minnesota after the deadline, it it goes to show how much deeper some teams are in the NBA and how much more help some teams had in the NBA with their role players than the Timberwolves had. Because we see these guys that aren't even playing and they're better than the guys we used to have. Exactly. Like a James Johnson. Exactly. And I was talking to him and they're like, why don't you guys like James Johnson? And then they said that they didn't like him. He was inconsistent. I haven't seen that in Minnesota so far. And I think something, you, you know, at least for me, when, when we got James Johnson to Minnesota, I had no idea what type of player he was. Maybe. You know, I, I I researched him and I was like, okay, this guy's not that good. And then you, I watched, I was watching him play, and I was like, man, this guy, his IQ's off the charts. He's good, he's super smart. He's he's been like, came from Miami. He's been like the Udonis Haslam of our team. He's been the enforced. He's been a, the guy that the vet that's kind of everyone on the team loves him too. Exactly. So, and, and and when you look at him, you're like, you're like, what type of you, you look at him and you think, man, this guy's like, this guy's scary, scary looking. He's an MMA, MMA fighter, but he's just he he seems like a really good dude. He does. He's, he he seems does. like a real like like you could have like a cool conversation with him or whatever. Like one of the most likable guys in the NBA. And and I just think that goes to kind of show. Um, I don't want to I don't want to sit here and say James Johnson's gonna be like a, like a starter in our lineup, this and that. But I think he could be a you know good bench piece for years to come. I, I truly, truly do. Um, and yeah, when he got to Minnesota, I didn't know. But he's quickly grown on me. To him and Malik have kind of you know grown on me to become some of my new favorite for the favorites for the Timberwolves. And I still think to this day James Johnson doesn't get that recognition. How about the next team? We got the Portland Trailblazers, and this was another team I was grasping at kind of straws to to find a, a player. Um, to, to, to say was underrated. Nate, go ahead, because I'm still struggling. Yeah, no, I think I think there's one that kind of sticks out like a sore thumb, but he's another guy that I think he's becoming so underrated. He might be overrated, but I'm going to go with him anyway because I couldn't find really anyone on Portland necessarily underrated, and that's Gary Trent Jr. He had a breakout, broke out in the bubble. We, we obviously know how much he's been talked about recently. It's kind of like Lou Dort. It's kind of like, was well, he's so underrated, he might be becoming overrated. But when you, when you look at what he did, he guarded the opposing team's best player while being an extremely, extremely good offensive weapon, an extremely confident player. No one expected this coming with him when he came out of college. And so I just, I chose Gary Trent. And I that I was between him and Ariza. Obviously, Ariza, you know what you're getting at. Ooh, Ariza would have been, Ariza you know, would have been you, okay. But you, I think. I, I, I think Ariza's talked about a lot, he too, is. because is, of what it, it, he's had. It's tough because he got hurt, obviously, this season. But, yeah, I, I, led, I lean towards Gary Trent Jr., too, just because of the just the way he plays, the energy he brings. Like, Nate, you know I like the guys that bring the energy the 100% of the game. He's going to do that. He's going to guard, mm -hmm. pick up the opponent's best player for court. court, work them, make them uncomfortable. I know as I, when I played point guard, obviously, I never played at a high level. But it's just it's that annoyance. It annoys you when you have to – not that they're going to – disrupt anything you're trying to do but when they pick you up full court and bring that type of energy it just adds another kind of annoying factor that's what gary chan's gonna do and i have no doubt in my opinion he is the most underrated player for the portland trail blazers this is our final no we got two teams left next team is another team i struggled greatly to find a i i, I couldn't even find one player nate on this team who the golden state warriors i couldn't golden find state War oh yeah 
No, I there's there's actually a player him. there's actually a player in Golden State I really really like. And it might be the same player as me, but I only had one that I thought maybe. We'll see who you think it is, man. So I'm looking at I'm looking at Golden State, and I'm looking at a guy. When I, when I when I was looking at who's underrated, I'm looking at a guy who's going to be a critical piece for them moving forward with with Steph and Clay return. And that guy for me is Damian Lee. I love Damian Lee. That's the guy, hey, that's the guy he, I had right there. Go I ahead, love what he offered, and he picked it up as the season went on and kept moving along too. He was I don't know. I don't like. I know he's from Drex, so I didn't. I know because I had, he's been on the roster for a while, but he was in the G League and I, and he wouldn't really play. And he finally got a chance this year with, with injuries. I really, really like his game. He's kind of a Swiss Army knife in in a sense because he doesn't really do anything super well, but he does a lot of things really, really good. He's a decent defender. He's a solid shooter. He can play make off the bounce a little bit. He's fairly efficient. He's a smart and heady player. And he seems like he's just a really good teammate as well, and kind of a kind of a guy that brings energy. Absolutely, you know I haven't watched the Warriors a ton this year, but when I looked to find you know that one player, Damian Lee's the guy that stood out for me and the guy I had. Uh, I didn't. It, there's not a lot to choose from here, in my opinion, but I think if there's one guy, it is Damian Lee. Hopping mm -hmm. into the thirtieth yep, and final team here. We have the Washington Wizards and, you know, kind of another gross type of a team that I just, I don't know, man. I like the Wizards. All I'm going to say about this, all I'm going to say about this is I really hope you didn't choose the guy you, 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 that I think you chose. That's all I got to say. That's all I got to say. If you let chose me, the guy, I think let me you chose see who I, disappointed. Let me see who I got down. I think I I didn't even do. I didn't even. I forgot about the Wizards. That's why I I, I stopped at the Warriors. So I'm. You go first. Right, while well, I look then, for my guy. Yeah, yeah. I'll go ahead and talk. So this is for the Wizards. It was. I it was. I, I. wasn't necessarily hard for me, but the guy I chose hasn't been super good. But you have seen flashes. He. He's young still, and he's a guy. When he came into the NBA, he kept. He was falling down draft boards a little bit, and I went. I'm not necessarily falling one about where he's supposed to maybe look a couple weeks after. And I went, I really hope this guy falls to Minnesota because he was so versatile in college. And he, had, the only thing he had really struggled with is his shooting, but it's Troy, it's Troy, Troy Brown Jr. I love, love, love his versatility. I think defensively he's got a bright future because of how long he is and how athletic he is. He's a really good playmaker. I love, I love, I don't know why I love athletic, lengthy guys who can play make it just it, it, it it's just one of the things i always look for in in looking for a guy who who i think is a good prospect and right. he's he's obviously his jump shot hasn't gotten to the point of where i where, where it needs to be yet but he's steadily improved and he's shown flashes he's shown games where he's going out and getting 25 8 and 5 he he's definitely had has games like that he definitely has past. especially with all the and so that's kind of why Right, and that's and that's why I chose him. I'm I still believe in Troy Brown Jr. Now, will he pan out? We'll still have to see. He's still been inconsistent, but yeah, he's he's a guy I really really like. I think for me, after doing just a little research, it was between three guys. You know, I'm still personally high on Rui this year. Like he wasn't great this season. This and that. Okay. Well, um, Troy Brown Jr. was the second guy that just okay. was initially looking. Oh. And the third and final guy is Davis Bertans. Okay, okay, that's Listen. fine. That's fine. I thought I hold up. Can I just say who I thought you were gonna choose? Thomas Bryant, huh? Yeah, I thought you were gonna choose Thomas Bryant. I do Bryant. like Thomas Bryant. Bryant. Don't get me wrong. Thomas Bryant can't defend you. He, he couldn't defend you or me, Ty. Neither could listen, I don't think Berton's a very high very good defender no, anyways. Berton gives you a lot more. But what Berton gives you is a forty two percent three point shooter at six foot ten. And if you watch Berton's mm -hmm. highlights, he takes some tough shots from three, like some moving in transition from 27. Like he takes and makes some very, very tough shots. And I think, you know, he's a, he's the type of guy that can fit on any NBA team. When he was healthy this year, year in 54 games he played, he averaged 15 points a game, you know, 15 points a game. That, listen, that, that's good. Obviously, Washington was hurt. It, with John Wall, Bradley Beal healthy, I think Davis Bertans is going to see more and more looks um, and, and stuff like that. I think, you know, if you shoot 42%, 42.4% from three um, at six foot ten, you can, you can on, almost fit on any team in the league.
No, you're right. I, I like Bertans a lot. I think he's one of the most underrated in terms of being an elite three point shooter, knowing that no one really talks about. Because he is an elite three point shooter. Absolutely. He's very, very elite. And if, if you watch the Wizards, I know people don't watch. I watched the Wizards a couple times, and you just go kind of, wow. This guy, because he's not just like a spot-up shooter he, either. He hits tough, tough threes, he's like in, I said. Right, right. All right, that is going to wrap it up for a super, super long video, guys. End up, We're going to end up breaking this into two different parts, so part one and part two. But I hope you guys did enjoy this video. Drop a like on the video. Subscribe if you are new. And always, as always, comment your thoughts down below on who do you guys think are, is the most underrated player from each of these teams, guys. I'm super, super excited. 2K21 is on the way, guys. As always, I love y'all, and have a blessed day.